remind everybody that uh, we do have extra t-shirts and USB drives uh, and a few embroidered shirts available for sale at the front desk. We also have some uh, freebies that are available up there as well. If you could help us out uh, by purchasing something, we really would appreciate that. It helps with the budget and that also means it's less that we have to pack up and take home. So uh, if you can help us, we should be sure to appreciate that. Up uh, first this morning, we have Tim Broom. Uh, testing your website with Selenium. Selenium test. 
has. We're going to talk about Selenium Remote Control versus Selenium WebDriver. Uh, the core Perl libraries you use for kind of doing each pen test. We'll talk about handling element locators and handling weights in your test, and then go over some sample tests. So, to get started running your first Selenium test with Perl, what you need to do is download the Selenium server. It's just a jar file. You can run that with java-jar name of the file, and for WebDriver-based tests, kind of the key module you need to install is Selenium Remote Driver from CPAN. So, now we'll bounce to a sample test, except, well, I'm going to do a pseudo live demo because uh, I haven't had a lot of luck with conference Wi-Fi, so we'll do this, maybe. So let's hit me here. So, first thing we're going to do is start up our Selenium server, um, then we're going to bounce over and I'm going to run the test in the Perl debugger so we can step through it. Uh, we start off, we initialize our driver, in this case we're going to change our default finder to CSS. Um, What's the default finder? Uh, it defaults to XPath. Um, I'll go over that later. Uh, so we're going to navigate to google.com. Then we're going to find the input element Q and send some keys to it. Uh, then this is sort of changing the weight characteristics. We'll talk about that more later. But if we didn't weight at all and tried to hit the first link, that would fail. We're running at full speed. Um, so we're finding the first result, clicking it, <coughs> we go to the conference website, we get the title, we make sure the title is what we want it to be, then we're going to find the element talks and schedule by the link text and click that. Next we're going to click the schedule, find and click the schedule, then we're going to find the link with Selenium in its title and click that. And here we are at the abstract for the talk. We'll check the title. Um, we'll make sure it's what we expect. And I had to sleep there in case I was running at full speed so you can see where we ended up. Then once we click driver dash quit, uh, this up, and that's what the Selenium test looks like. So let's bounce back to the presentation. So there's two versions of Selenium, and um, we'll talk about those because sometimes you kind of get started and you don't even know what you're using, so I wanted to make that clear. Um, so the first kind of version was Selenium Remote Control. It kind of served as a middle layer between your code and browser. So when you ran a test, the first thing that would happen would it be it would pop another window, which was the Selenium remote control, and then that window would send commands to your actual test window. And the way it operated was you had your Selenium commands, and it mimicked those actions by running JavaScript itself. So <clears throat> This had some problems due to kind of the translation layer in the middle. Sometimes you could do things that you really couldn't do in the browser. So an example of this might be you had a text area that wasn't editable, but Selenium Remote Control was trying to control that via JavaScript and happily change the contents of that text area. Uh, <coughs> so Selenium 2 is WebDriver based and you talk directly to the browser via WebDriver API calls. So what this means is that browser makers have built in WebDriver support right into the browser, and I missed a letter at the end of that. Um, so these tests run somewhat faster, so they're more correct in how they're sent to the browser, and they behave kind of more
more consistently. Um, and it's really a standard that all the main browsers are supporting and continuing to build up. So, so talking about the different types of Selenium tests, for Selenium Remote Control, the main module is WWW Selenium. And there's a test variant that gives you some additional testing methods. So util, there's a network capture module, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Then on the web driver side, we have Selenium Remote Driver, which is the main module, the test variant, which gives you some more testing functionality, and then uh, Selenium Remote Web Element is an important one to know. It comes as part of the distribution with this, um, but has its own methods. We'll talk about that more. And basically, when you do a find, what comes back is a web element object. And so then you can perform actions using web element class methods. So the sample code for this presentation is primarily going to be uh, remote web drive, remote driver based or web driver based. If you're starting a new, that's really what I would suggest because it's kind of the more current technology. Um, my repo will try to contain examples of Selenium remote control so you can compare and contrast or if you're already working with Selenium remote control, you can get some information from that. So some key concepts while writing tests. Uh, first thing is you need to find the elements that you want to interact with. And so you can locate in a variety of ways. You can use CSS, you can use the input name of an element, um, you can use link text or partial link text, or you can use XPath, and there are more ways, but those are kind of the main ones. <coughs> so find element is kind of the key place where you start uh, kind of finding what you want to get. So the find element command takes a search string, which is basically just a CSS selector or a name or a link text, depending on what it is, what finder type you're using. Um, and then the finder type, you either need to specify that, like CSS, adds path, or it's going to go back to your default. Um, if you haven't done anything, the default is going to be adds path. You can override that, which was the example I had earlier. So if you want to use CSS mostly, you can do that in your driver constructor and then save yourself typing when you do all the find elements. So find element calls return Selenium remote web element objects. Um, Selenium remote web element define methods to take action on those elements or test attributes of them. So look at the documentation on that to see what's available. <coughs> so here we do call driver with a find element and then what we get back from there is actually a web element. So when we call that click, we're actually calling remote web element click. Um, you can also do like send keys or check if something is displayed or hidden. And so this is kind of nice because it sort of allows you to chain finding something and doing something with it all on one line. <coughs> so managing weights in your test is also an important thing to figure out. So tests need to properly wait for completion of actions before looking for an element provided as a result of the previous action. So when you load a new page, you might need to wait for that page to come back from the server or reach document.ready before you can start clicking on elements. If you try to do that too soon, it's going to fail and not find them. Um, then sometimes a trickier one is a change to the current page via Ajax or JavaScript. So you kind of have your range of weights. If 
your weight is too short or non-existent, your tests are gonna fail. Uh, so the other extreme is too long. Maybe you just put sleep 30 seconds everywhere. Well, that's not really a good solution either because your test weeks are gonna take forever as you build up more tests. So kind of the happy middle ground, just right, is wait only as long as you need to. So you kind of pull until the element or what you're looking for is ready and time out if it takes too long. And that should give you both passing tests and faster test weeks. So how can you accomplish this with Selenium Remote Driver? Um, so waiting for page loads, by default, it comes with a page load timeout. It defaults, if you test it, to 180 seconds, which might be excessive. Um, so you might wanna, depending on your setup, you might wanna fail much sooner. Um, so you can set, set that to be something else. But the fact that this is kind of built in is nice because it, uh, all you need to do is navigate to a page. You don't have to explicitly ask it to wait afterwards. It just falls back to this page load timeout. And that works for other things. Basically, anytime you're moving to a new page, so it could be a form submit to a new page as well, will uh, pay attention to this. And the, so another way you want to, um, another way is related to page element. So, remote driver has something called the implicit wait timeout, and its default is zero milliseconds. Now, basically every time you do a find element, it is going to wait up to that amount of time before it times out and says this element isn't available. So, if you want to change this, you can up it to a second or two or five seconds, um, and that, that solves a lot of the cases. Um, you probably don't want to set that value to be super high. Or if you need it to be high for a certain test, set it high for that test, but leave your default to be a more reasonable value everywhere else. Because some of your tests may test for an element not being there. And what that means is it's always going to, your find element is always going to take up to implicit wait timeout if it's not there. So you don't want that, that value to be too huge. <clears throat> um, another way to do it is waiting for a condition. And the Selenium remote control way, or WWW Selenium had a way to do this. And basically, there was a method wait for condition, and you could pass it a JavaScript snippet, and it would run that up to the wait timeout. So 10 seconds and milliseconds, <coughs> and would run that until it passed for time. Now, a remote driver doesn't have this, but it's something you could build in and extend it with, and I have some sample code for that in the repo. <coughs> so, now a few more example tests. And these example tests, um, kind of the goal is to show you some maybe less common things than clicking around the web page and filling out tests. Um, so running JavaScript in your tests, I think that's something a lot of people need to do. Um, having full access to JavaScript allows you to look at the page contents and get information um, used to run your tests. So in this case, we do something really simple. And we execute a script and we just ask to check whether our shopping, get our shopping list link or the allies in our shopping list back. Um, and then we have a test to check that. Um, <clears throat> so something else you might wanna do, a lot of times you have JS libraries that you require in your pages and you might wanna make sure those are there and initialized. Um, we concatenate a bunch of our JavaScript together so Get a syntax, syntax error early on that would mean the later libraries in that same file would fail. And so what this does is it just kind of looks for the handles of each of those libraries to make sure 
they're initialized, and then uh, fails if um, they're not there for any reason. So capturing network data, I think this is kind of fun. Um, and Selenium, or Selenium Remote Control has a way to do this. WebDriver doesn't really by default. So if you wanted to do it with WebDriver, what you could do is run your test through a proxy, then harvest the logs or whatever from that proxy, and then analyze those. Um, that is kind of a pain. So in this case, I'm going to show you a Selenium network capture that uses Selenium remote control. Um, so we have some sample HTML. I have some CSS in here. It references an image in the CSS that isn't there. I also have an image source pointing to an image that isn't there, and a script source that's pointing to a script that's not there. Um, we do the setup to do the network capture. Basically, at the end of the day, we get a data structure full of URLs, status codes, headers, etc. And here, I just loop through those and find anything that has a status code of four that starts with a four or a five. Um, and if we get any like that, we report that. So <coughs> here we get all of those broken resources back. And I don't know, that's kind of a cool test to have because if your build fails at deploying something or your designer typos something, then when you hit those pages, that test will find that. Um, <coughs> Then, this is a really similar thing. Um, this is looking for Google Analytics tracker. So if your website cares about how much traffic you have, you probably want to make sure that whatever you're using to track your traffic is working correctly. And so we do the same thing. We capture the network traffic. We look for something that matches the URL that gets called out to the tracker. We make sure that we're pulling it once and only once and make sure that we're getting a 200. And I think that's all the time I had planned, so if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them right now. Okay. Yes? Is there a tutorial somewhere, some really good way to pick this up quickly, or is there the reasons of it? Um, I, I was hoping some of this would provide it. Um, the, the interesting thing about Selenium, I think, is that, well, I think one of the things about Selenium testing is people do it internally, so like there's not a lot of source code out there for sample tests, because they're all mostly specific to your environment. So um, some of this stuff is helpful uh, to get started, hopefully, and I have some sample code in this repo. Um, but I haven't found a super great resource. There's some other talks um, out there too. Most of them are uh, sledding remote control based, or the past control talks I've seen in this. So, anyone else? Yes? Does the uh, JavaScript script that gets executed waiting for its JavaScript to return? Who is using the JavaScript? The web driver? Is yeah, right? yeah web driver just sends that JavaScript snippet and um, whatever, well, yeah, and then it just keeps executing it at whatever interval you have set behind the scenes, and then when it passes, it'll come back and continue or break your timeout and fail. Um, so, yes? I'm just a little confused about the architecture of this. So the, the test that you're running is running on the same machine as your browser? Um, Okay, that's a good question. So, uh, so you can set up the Selenium server to run on, in this case, for my, when I do it, I run it on the same machine, but in that initialization, you can point it to other machines. So if you had another machine, you would start the Selenium server on that machine, then you would just, in your initialization, there's some arcs to point at that, and, um, and, you would run the test on your machine, but you would see it open up a browser or do whatever on another machine. So. Anyone else? Do you ever use Sauce Labs? I have not, no, but it, it's, yeah. 
it's an option available for you that's sort of a cloud-based 